In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, restorer and lover of innocence, direct the hearts of your servants towards yourself, that those you have set free from the darkness of unbelief may never stray from the light of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles Some men came down from Judea and taught the brothers, Unless you have yourselves circumcised in the tradition of Moses, you cannot be saved. This led to disagreement, and after Paul and Barnabas had had a long argument with these men, it was arranged that Paul and Barnabas and others of the church should go up to Jerusalem and discuss the problem with the apostles and elders. All the members of the church saw them off, and as they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, they told how the pagans had been converted, and this news was received with the greatest satisfaction by the brothers. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and by the apostles and elders, and gave an account of all that God had done with them. But certain members of the Pharisees' party, who had become believers, objected, insisting that the pagans should be circumcised and instructed to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and elders met to look into the matter. The Word of the Lord I rejoiced when I heard them say, Let us go to God's house. I rejoiced when I heard them say, Let us go to God's house. And now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. I rejoiced when I heard them say, Let us go to God's house. Jerusalem is built as a city, strongly compact. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. I rejoice when I heard them say, Let us go to God's house. For Israel's law it is, there to praise the Lord's name. There were set the thrones of judgment of the house of David. I rejoice when I heard them say, let us go to God's house. Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my own sheep, and my own know me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he cuts away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes to make it bear even more. You are pruned already by means of the word that I have spoken to you. Make your home in me as I make mine in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit 
all by itself, but must remain part of the vine. Neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, with me in him, bears fruit in plenty. For cut off from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is like a branch that has been thrown away. He withers. These branches are collected and thrown on the fire, and they are burnt. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask what you will, and you shall get it. It is to the glory of my Father that you should bear much fruit, and then you will be my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the vine, you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. Jesus tells us, God is your total source of life. You are in absolute need of him. For true human life and growth, Saint Paul understands this very well. He says, God with all abundant wealth in Christ Jesus will supply all your needs. Philippians chapter four, verse nine. God is interested in my whole person, in my every need, no matter what. Matthew and Mark in their Gospels tell us. In the evening, they brought Jesus, all the sick, and those with every kind of affliction, and he healed them all. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. By the compassion of the vine, Jesus tells us that it is God's purpose for us to live abundantly, to have a full life. I have come that you may have life and life in all its fullness. John chapter 10, verse 10. God who is in me is greater and more powerful than the devil who is in the world. John writes, You belong to God, for the Spirit who is in you is more powerful than the Spirit in those who belong to the world. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 God wants you and me to be winners. He wants us to have the power to overcome every evil in our life, every attack of Satan 
to destroy our relationship with God and to destroy our spiritual growth and vitality with it. So Jesus holds out the victory. He says, remain in union with me and I will remain in union with you. Unless you remain in me, you cannot bear fruit. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. Jesus promises that we will receive great power through this relationship of love with him. He says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, then you will ask for anything you wish and you shall have it. But not the condition we must really and truly be one in mind and heart with the Lord. Then his power will flow into us and the promise will come true. God bless you. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Take care, and God bless you.